Hey everyone, Josh here. Just gonna do a quick video on freeing up turbo vanes on the TDI engines. Um, got a assortment of turbos here. So this one here is my uh, demonstration turbo. It's a 1722. So it's a little bit larger than uh, the factory turbos on ALH, BEW, and BRMs. I sadly don't have an ALH turbo, but it looks very, very similar to this one, just a little bit smaller. The next one would be the BEW, which kind of similar, except you got the spring clips here. And it's got the smart actuator that would hang down here farther with a longer rod versus the kind of the ball and pin style. Here is a BRM. So the BRMs are orientated a little bit differently. The ALHs and BEWs, they hang down like this would be well, hanging down. Whereas this would be facing up here and you can see your actuator up in your engine bay. And then here is a, just a VNT 17. So pretty similar layout to the stock BEW. The difference is these are found on PD 130s. You can just tell it's a little bit bigger. So as far as freeing up turbo vanes, you got a couple different ways to do it. First way is spraying oven cleaner in your downpipe. I am not a huge fan and I if I had two turbos that I had to take apart I'd maybe compare spraying through there versus here but I don't so I'm gonna skip this part here um, the reason I don't like it is you'll spray your oven cleaner in here but you have veins all the way around the oven cleaner will expand a little bit but I have a hard time believing that the oven cleaner will get this portion the second way, or I guess the first and second way you can do on the car, the second one would be filling it through your EGR port. Um, if you've got an EGR block off plate for uh, diagnostic purposes, you can take that off nice and easy, fill it through there with uh, oven cleaner and just gravity will work and bring it down to the veins there. And then the final, way to do it is split the center section from your hot side here so all your veins will be here so you can get this out of there and you can actually see the veins in here so this video i'm going to do through the egr port first and then take it apart and we'll see what it looks like inside and then we'll do we'll split it here and make sure everything's really clean it's not much different on these other turbos. You can see all well, the bolts are broken there. But same kind of deal, you're gonna take these five bolts off around the center section. This VNT-17 is identical. And then the BRM turbo, same kind of deal. You're splitting the, the hot side off of the center section there. So let's get started. Let's just take another kind of baseline. So it should hit the stop at about 18. I'm at 20 there. It's actually not too far off. doesn't go all the way up. So that's usually how it'll go. You have enough vacuum to pull it down, but not enough spring tension to bring it back up. So we'll uh, fill the port full and work it free and we'll see uh, if that's any better. So first off, we're doing it here on car. As you can see, even though it's on my bench, uh, I'm gonna use some Easy off in a squirt bottle. 
Uh, if you're doing it on car, like actually in car, the aerosol version of this actually works pretty nice. You don't have to sit there and pump it. But this is what I've got, so this is what we're using. So it's just sitting here and fill it up. Uh, one thing is oven cleaner is really corrosive, as you can see. So make sure you wear gloves. So I've worked it back and forth a little bit now. I'm actually kind of surprised on how quick that freed up. But um, there we go. You can see a bunch of oven cleaner down in there. You can see it oozing out. So I'd imagine a good half or three quarter of the veins are clean there that way. It seems to be enough that the actuator moves nicely now. Just hit the stop there now. We're about 18, so it's about where we need to be. all the way to the top so it's definitely acting how it's supposed to now now you could always put more oven cleaner in there I know I've done them before where you pretty well fill them right to the top and then depending on your exhaust you can just start it up and well don't start it in your garage I guess you'll end up with a big pile of oven cleaner behind you but you can just kind of blow it out um, but I'm gonna take this off and blow it out into a oil container and then uh, let's split it. So we're gonna start splitting it here. Uh, just a few tips. Uh, we're splitting it at this seam here. So the housing here could, or it will be seized on. So a little bit of heat, never hurt anything. Uh, makes it a lot easier. So you'll take these bolts out and basically and get this center section unbolted so usually you give the cold side a few tops and it should come out so the less seized it is the better the less you have to hit the this side and then another thing is these bolts these ones aren't too bad um, but this is a hybrid turbo so it's probably had a shorter life than uh, a lot of the stock gnt 15s and stock turbos on VEWs and stuff so before you start make sure the bolt heads all look good or you have tools to get broken bolts or rounded heads out that way you're not out of car for just trying to clean these up so I'll uh, switch over to the video camera here and uh, we'll take this apart before we take it apart here make sure this arms all the way up and either put a paint marker on here or make sure you know exactly where it goes because uh, there's a locating dowel in here. So we'll see it when it's apart, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to get some a paint marker or something on there to mark that as well.
So here's the BNT lever. There's a little locating tab there. And that goes on your housing here. And as you can see, little to no oven cleaner got in where this control ring is. Um, I doused it in brake cleaner, so I imagine a lot of this liquid you're seeing is brake clean. Um, rotating assembly itself, it's still not bad, but still pretty stiff. So that's the kind of the downside of doing it on the car. It's a bit hard to get this clean. So we'll take this all apart. We'll clean all the nozzles up and make sure it's good to go. Uh, so you want to make sure that the nozzle or the control ring goes back in the way it came out and all the nozzles are facing the same way. So either take a picture or I guess look at this video here. Um, but yeah, I'll start taking stuff apart here and we'll get this uh, nice and clean. So everything, here's everything all freed up. If you want to get really particular, you can take this off to really scrub the nozzles clean. Just the issue is they're really small Torx bits. Um, I've had bad experiences with them breaking and I don't have any heat here. So everything spins nice and free. 
so I'm not too concerned. So that's all cleaned up and the ring's all cleaned up. So uh, time to put it back together. We're gonna set this actuator up here now. Um, it wasn't too bad to begin with, but we're just gonna double check now that everything's nice and clean. Uh, we want it just starting to move at about three inches of mercury, and you want it to hit the stop here, somewhere between 17 to 20 inches. Um, the sooner it hits, the more likely it's going to be to overboost, so I usually aim for around 17 or 18. Um, it seems to work good for any of my cars that I've done this on, so. Uh, Okay, let's see how this uh, sits. Can't really see the gauge here with the glare, but I'll just read it off here now. So it started moving, and that's about three. That's about five, seven, nine, ten, about twelve, fourteen, fifteen. 16, that's about 17 and a half, yeah, that's nothing to complain there, I'm just double check, yep, spot on, so you can check and make sure it holds pressure, uh, you don't want this leaking either, so, Everything seems to be good to go, so uh, this turbo is ready to go back on a car.